Life can change in an instant. For many wheelchair users, the struggle to push forward is a daily challenge. After years of development and countless prototypes, we created Rib Grips, the revolutionary wheelchair hand rim covers with built-in ribs for ultimate grip and comfort. No more slick surfaces, no more heat burns, just pure, reliable grip. Rib Grips, empowering you to push forward with ease. Rib Grips, get a grip on your freedom. Discover the difference. Visit ribgrips.com and use promo code GRIP today. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome back to What's Up Waco, the podcast that loves to introduce you to the people, the places, and the properties that make Waco an excellent community to live. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to What's Up Waco with your host, Erica Boisvert. And today... It's just me. There's no guest. We're not interviewing a small business owner today. We will get back to that next week. Um, But today, since we are just about at the mid-year point, I thought we would do a housing update. Um, The information will be coming from the Texas A&M Research Center. They do tons of awesome data points and research of the real estate market throughout the state. Um, So today I'll focus obviously on Waco because this is what's up Waco and I'll touch a little bit on McLennan County, but really the numbers are pretty in line with each other. So I'm not going to get a little, a little too crazy. So if I say something and you're like, wait, that's not right, then probably you're one of my Orange County friends. And if I say we're not really experiencing a multiple offer situation uh, around here anymore, it's because we're not um, on certain houses we are, but it's not the norm anymore. Uh, I know that's not the same for y'all. So, you know, more power to you. And if we talk about days on market or we talk about how much inventory we have, please, it is very specific to Waco and McLennan County. Just want to get that out there. All right. So we are a little bit past mid-year 2024. Today we are in the middle of July, but the information from the Texas A&M Research Center is going to be up through June at this point. Obviously, we can't calculate July yet. We're still in it. So let's talk through kind of what we're seeing here. Now, here's the thing. I know sometimes people will have these market updates out and it's just a static photo with a bunch of numbers and some jumble information and and acronyms that people are like, what the heck? Um, And so without any context, of course, this seems like scroll on by. Uh, And speaking of scrolling, but please don't stop, go to Boysvert Realty Team, either on Facebook or Instagram, and the infographics that I'm working from will be posted there for you. Uh, so you can see this in front of you. If you're like me, a very visual person, it might help to be able to look at this while I'm talking about it. Um, so I just want to keep that in mind. So why am I doing a podcast about it? Because I don't want it to be static. I don't want it to be a uh, number vomit, just picture on the screen saying, okay, here's your market update. Like there's no context to that. Why do you need to know this? Who needs to know this? So let's get into it. So if you're thinking about buying or selling, or if you're a homeowner, this information is always good information for you to have. Why? Well, let's get into the obvious facts. If you want to sell your home, you need to know what that's looking like. You need to know how long it's taking houses to sell what the median price is looking like. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is this a good time to sell? And on the flip side, you need to know all those same things as a buyer because whatever the answer is, you can use it to your advantage and you need to know the answer, right? Okay, so we've talked about why you need to know and we've talked about who needs to know. And now let's get into it. We are looking at the housing report for Waco in June of 2024. And here's what we're seeing. We're seeing that the median price in our area has gone up, which is actually 
I think a little bit opposite of what people are thinking. Um, personally, I've noticed uh, uh, what feels like a plateau, but to look at this and see that things are up 2.4%. Okay, cool. So the median price in Waco right now, June 2024, is about $290,000. So relative to June of 2023, it's gone up 2.4%. <laughs> Do with that what you will. Uh, home sellers, you're typically going to want to see an average equity appreciation of about three to 4%. Um, so, you know, 2.4% is a little bit lower than I would like. This is not a market in which I would say, hey, sell, sell, sell. And we'll get into a little bit more of why. Home buyers, seeing this increase of about 2.4% means, hey, why, what are you waiting for? If you saw something last June and you were like, I'm going to wait because house prices are going to go down. Well, stop that because clearly they're not. 2% may not seem like much, but it got us up to $290,000. So maybe that house was 280 last year. That's a little bit more that you're having to come out of pocket for now. All right. So let's look at active listings. Now this one, this one is interesting to me. Um, we have... We have a lot of active listings. I'm going to tell you it's up 27.3% over last year and that we're sitting at about 1,194 active listings in June. So why is that important? Well, if you're a buyer, that's good news. You've got lots of choices out there, right? As opposed to during the pandemic and the crazy market, you had zero choices and you were grabbing whatever you could and you were grateful for the interest rate and you just hoped it would all work out. And in the end, I think most of them did. Um, but for, for a seller, if I was looking at 27.3% increase in just about 1,200 homes on the market in Waco, uh, I now know that my competition has increased and I really need to be strategic in selling my home. Or maybe part of that strategy means waiting because the real estate world is cyclical, right? If it's, if it's really high at this point, it's got to come back down at some point. We just, you know, somebody send me that crystal ball that helps me understand which way the market's going to go. It doesn't exist. So, you know, if you need to sell, you need to sell. So just use this information to come up with the best strategy that you can with your real estate agent. So... We had 281 closed sales uh, in June. And so that is down by about 11% over last year. And why is it down? I think people are, uh, in my experience, buyers are taking a little bit more time to make that decision. Uh, we are experiencing fewer people who are in a I have to buy mindset. Uh, and they have a lot of choices. They've got choices and buyers have time on their side. And so we're seeing a decrease in monthly activity. And you know what? In a market like this, that's that's what I would expect. Um, we're also looking at about 4.9 months of inventory. So I hate, I hate inventory because it sounds so like producty. But, you know, when you're looking at data sets, you really have to break it down into, you know, actual numbers and we can't talk about feelings and emotions and, and, and heart everything. This is, this is the data and the data is 4.9 months of inventory. That's, that's the units on the market. So how, what's the best way for me to explain this? If we were to stop taking listings, no more houses go on the market after today, then it would take us roughly five months to sell every active house on the market if we continue on at the rate of, of sales that we're experiencing right now. Ugh, math. But that's how they come up with it, and that's how we know what that inventory looks like. So that tells you, you know, back in the craziness of the pandemic, we were, <laughs> there were times we were definitely less than a month and it feels like there were times that we were like less than two weeks of inventory. There just were not enough houses. People weren't going anywhere. And now we're on the flip side of that, but not completely opposite. So I don't want people to think we're a hundred percent in a buyer's market. We're not. We're more in what I would consider to be a balanced market, which 
personally, I think it is a better place to be. Again, going back to buyers having more time and more options, that's a good thing. Now, there are probably some sellers out there who disagree because they want to get their home sold. But here's the thing, you know, up your game. <laughs> You're competing against all these other other things. And really, um, you have to keep that you have to keep that in consideration when you're figuring out how to sell your house. When you're looking at five months worth of inventory and 1,194 homes on the market, how does yours stand out? Uh, also take a look at price point. We're looking at about 36% of those houses in June are going to be somewhere between 200,000 and 299. So they're, they're not hitting the 300 mark. So the majority of the homes in Waco are selling in that price point. Um, as we move up in price point, the percentage gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Really, we're not doing a whole heck of a lot um, in the 500 and up market. It's it's definitely slower. That is less than 15% of what the sales are. Why does any of this matter? Well, I'm trying to kind of hit on that as we're talking about it. Um, you know, they always say price, condition, and location. And... I think sometimes you also need to take into consideration the market, which is going to affect your price that you're asking for, right? Just because your neighbor Ted down the street sold his house a year and a half ago for $50,000 more than you're, you're listing your house at, it doesn't mean his house was better. It doesn't mean anything. It means Ted sold in a really good market for sellers. And what you're looking at right now is a price adjustment because it's just not that great for sellers anymore. And I know a lot of you really understand this and I'm, I'm, you know, not saying any earth shattering information. I'm not sharing anything that hasn't been shared before, but you know, for our clients who, and friends and listeners who are first time buyers, or maybe you haven't bought or sold a home in seven or 10 years. And, and this is, this is all a foreign thought process to you. Well, I'm trying to break it down in a way for you to understand like what's kind of going on in Waco. And then as we look at McLennan County, it's really not that, it's really not that much different. I think closed sales were less, but as we break out into the county, you know, we're seeing different types of property. When we get more into rural areas, we're seeing different um, price points. We're still kind of very comfortably in Waco in the 200 to 299 price point. Um, about 37.4% of McLennan County sales were within that price range. And the median price in the county is uh, 291. So 291,000. And so you know, we're seeing a lot of the same things. You're also seeing about 4.6 months of inventory. And uh, it just, it's a nominal difference. It's really, it really is. And so you just have to factor these things in. Now for buyers, a five month inventory, that's good for you. You can take your time. You can find a house that really fits your needs. There's no rush. A few years ago, there was a rush. And I know we've had clients who did buy a house during the rush. And, and lately they're like, you know, I, the only thing I like about my house is the interest rate. Let's sell it. And so we do. And they're realizing, um, they're realizing a profit, uh, because there is still some increase and there's been some equity and some people have, you know, done some updates on their house and, and there's, there's good things to be had in there. Um, so I don't want anybody to feel discouraged. It is definitely a very balanced market. I'm a, like I said, a big, big, big fan of a balanced market. If you have any questions about the update for June or what this means moving forward or the best way to interpret this for your particular situation, please reach out to us. As always, Boys Vert Realty team, we are on Facebook and Instagram. Our phone numbers are there. You can call, text, whatever you'd like to do. I'm happy to answer these questions. I actually geek out on this data and really um, love to get into it and, and look at neighborhood versus neighborhood and, and see where the numbers are landing and where the price breaks are and, and what's going on. Um, you know, and if you are a home seller out there right now, I just want to encourage you, if your house has been on the market for a while, if you've met the three big, you know, the, the triangle they talk about, price, condition, and location, um, if you've met those, well, then you're just, 
you're just waiting for the right buyer. And so it, it's reflected in our days on market. We are seeing about 57 days on market with about an average of 35 days to close, which is 92 days from listing your house to closing day. And so don't be discouraged if you didn't get an offer in the first two weeks. And please understand um, if you're paying attention to condition and location and price and adjusting those things as you can, when you can, um, then, then you've done what you need to do. And unfortunately, in this kind of a market, it is a little bit of a waiting game and it's going to take a little more patience than maybe it would have a year and a half ago. So hang in there. Things are working out. And if you're thinking about buying and you're overwhelmed by price or rates, um, don't be. I want to encourage you as well. This is still a good time to look at a house and purchase. And I'll tell you what, we're seeing seller concessions come back, which could be um, money for repairs. It could be uh, covering closing costs. We've seen rate buy downs. There are things working in your favor because there are sellers who are just done and ready to move on to the next chapter. And that puts you both in a very good position to negotiate. So don't be discouraged, you guys. This is not a bad market. We're, we're not even in a buyer's market. It's really balanced. I'm just going to keep saying it. Balanced. I like balance. People, everybody's walking away with something that they want. So, you know, make it work in your favor as much as you can and, and hire the agent who can help you do that. Another thing, so that's pretty much, that's all I wanted to get into because if, if you have questions that dig deeper into the market update than that, then please just reach out because that gets into some real specifics. But for a quick, very quick, broad overview of Wake Women Clinton County, that is what we're looking at today. Um, but I, I mentioned there's something that I, I keep coming up against this in Facebook groups and just in real life um, questions that we get from clients. And it's about appraisers versus inspection. So I just want to talk about this a little bit today, and then that will be all of our real estate, and we will get right back to interviewing small business owners. Super excited about a few business owners that we have lined up coming on the show in the next few weeks. Uh, we've got a restaurant, we've got a traveling bar, we've got snow cones and all kinds of good things. So so definitely keep listening. That stuff's coming back. Let's just get through um, a market update. I do like to share that information with you guys. Um, okay, so appraisers versus inspections. Here we go. An inspector is going to be hired by the buyer. Um, and buyer, you're going to pay that either at the time of inspection or when you schedule the inspection, whatever you work out with the inspector, right? These inspectors are licensed by the state through the Texas Real Estate Commission, just like a real estate agent. Our license is held by the Texas Real Estate Commission. Um, and I think it's important to note, and I don't say this to knock anybody down, but um, it, they don't have any requirement to have a background in construction. This might be a talk for another time. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's also actually even better if they're not licensed in a specific uh, housing system, like a plumber, electrician, um, you know, foundation repair, like if they don't have any kind of specialty coming into it, that's also very helpful because here's the thought of a general home inspection. It is going to take a look at the whole house, how it functions structurally, how it's holding up. If there are any um, deficiencies, you're going to hear deficiency a million times. Um, if there are any deficiencies with the property, uh, any repairs that need to be addressed, any safety issues that are a concern, that's what the inspector's there for. Also, I love an inspector who will explain a little bit about um home maintenance or who takes the time to recommend, um, you know, checking your HVAC or remembering to do whatever home maintenance tips they might recommend while going through the report with you. Um, I really like it as an orientation for the homeowner as well. Um, I want you as a buyer to be looking and learning where's the water heater, where's my, um, uh, where does my air filter go? Um, where's my secondary condensation line? How do I access my clean out? Like these things are super important and you, you need to learn 
that while the inspector is going through the property too. A lot of people approach this as, I'm going to find everything that's wrong with the house and I'm going to get the seller to fix it all. And that's why we're doing this. And no, like your primary concern should be that the property is safe, structurally sound, and that you learn about the house that you're about to buy or move into. Or that you learn it's a risky investment for you and maybe you should move on because that's also sometimes the case. Um, when the report comes back to you, it's going to be long, y'all. It is going to be pages and pages and pages and pages. But I want you to calm down when that 86-page file comes your way. Uh, I just, just know it's going to be a lot of pictures and captions and um, information from the inspector about deficient items. Also, that word can be so overwhelming. And when you get a report back and it has like 36 red flags and 36 deficient items and you're like, oh my God, I can't buy the house. Ooh, back up. Because let's take a look at what that deficient item could be. It could be something as simple as a code change, right? A building code that was one way when the house was built and has since changed. It could be something that was one way in... 2015 and then was updated to something else in 2018. It doesn't mean the house is falling down. Now you need to take a look at each of those deficiencies. Um, and if the inspector has marked it as a safety item, for sure, you're going to talk that through and then talk with your agent and you can put together a request for repairs to present to the seller and then seller. You're going to take a look at that and you're going to talk to your agent about it. Um, and you'll devise a strategy. You'll discuss what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, whatever. Um, but it's good for you to know what's going on with your property, right? And it's also something that you need to understand that if it's something you didn't know, and now you do, um, if that particular transaction falls through, you know, keep in mind that now you know what you know. Just talk to your agent about that. If you're one of our clients, give us a call. Um, but, but that is what the inspection is for. And then you request repairs, y'all negotiate it, figure it out, however you're going to figure it out. Or maybe, you know, in some cases we've had to cancel transactions or we've had buyers cancel transactions because it was too much or, you know, because you couldn't come to an agreement. It happens. So that's the inspection in a nutshell. Buyer pays up front, buyer hires the inspector, um, you make requests for repairs, you negotiate those repairs and you move on one way or the other. An appraiser, an appraiser is different. So the appraisal is going to come in and provide your lender or your financing institution with the value of the home. Okay. Now value and price are two different things. And what we're hoping as real estate professionals is that the home was priced correctly and will meet value. And so the appraiser is going to be hired by the lender or financing institution, paid for by the buyer. It'll be wrapped into your closing costs. Um, and they will come out and they'll do similar things and they'll make sure that your water heater functions and they will make sure your windows open and shut. They'll take a look for, um, wood rot. Certain lenders will require a pest inspection. You know, they're looking for termites. They're looking for, um, structural damage. They want to see what's going on with this, this property that they're giving you money for, right? They want to make sure that this is risk averse for them, right? They want to make sure the money that they're putting into this house is money that they can most likely get back when you decide to sell it, right? Because when you sell, you got to pay them back for the mortgage that they gave you, which is dumb. I don't know why they don't just give you the money, but they don't. Um, and so, so there are times an appraiser will notice items like, I don't know, wood rot or raw wood that hasn't been painted on the structure or a termite damage or I don't know, any number of items, right? The water heater doesn't work. Uh, and that will become what is known as a lender required repair. And what that lender is saying to you is, I'm not giving you money until this repair is sat like completed. Like it needs to be fixed. It needs to satisfy the appraiser. Um, and, and then we'll give you the money. 
Now, just because it's lender required doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done, okay? This is going to be very broad. I'm not going to get into government-backed versus conventional. Like, this happens all the time. There are times with all loan types that an appraiser can call out lender-required repairs. And we're not going to get into the nitty-gritty of FHA, VA, conventional, yada, yada. You know, um, first of all... <laughs> That's not my wheelhouse. I don't know all of the all of the things. I know the general things that I look out for for our people. Um, but I don't know all of the things. So we're taking a very broad spectrum view of appraisal and lender required repairs. Now, once that comes back and it's on the appraisal report, then it becomes again a negotiation. So I think there's a a misconception out there in the in the world of um, home selling that the seller is going to be required to pay for the repairs. Now, there's a bunch of schools of thought on this, right? Everybody has their own opinion. They're like belly buttons. Everybody's got one. Nobody cares. Um, and so I'm not I'm not really going to get into that with you. If you want to know how I handle that with our clients, then, you know, become one of our clients. But, you know, it is it is a point of negotiation. And there are times when buyers can pay for those repairs. There are times when they cannot. But there are times when they can. And I think... Typically, a seller is going to be the one to take care of it. Like, look, I'm the type of person that even if I put something on Facebook Marketplace for you to buy for 20 bucks, I'm still going to clean it, make sure it's in good repair, like the condition's decent, you know, and then I'll put it out on my curb. And whatever happens after that is between you and God and, you know, get there and pick it up as soon as you can. But some people just don't have that train of thought and it could be dirty and marked and damaged. And they're like, I'm giving it to you for 20 bucks. If you need to clean it, you need to clean it. And they set it out on their curb. There's just different schools of thought on this. Um, if I was selling my home, I would want to sell it in the, mo in the best condition it could be in a for price, but B for safety. Like somebody's going to come into that property and I want to make sure that it's good for that person. Right. That's my personal opinion. That's how my husband and I do things. That, that is not always the way it works out. So I just, all that to say, I just want sellers to know that you are not required to clear this lender required repair. And a buyer can, in certain instances, be the one to foot the bill for it. But you need to know it needs to be done prior to closing. Um, because this lender isn't going to release a mortgage to the buyer <clears throat> or the borrower um, until this condition is cleared. Okay. And so a lot of times it's very easy. The appraiser will just come back out and look. Yep, we're good to go. It's cleared. They release. Assuming everything else has lined up, they'll give out the uh, clear to close and everything's great. So at the end of the day, you're also hoping with an appraisal that they uh, that you meet value. And um, sellers, this is super frustrating, I think, sometimes for sellers because all you're going to hear is whether the appraisal met value or didn't meet value. You are not entitled to know um, what that number is. And that can be a little frustrating. But all you need to know is, yay, the transaction's moving forward. And that's good for everybody involved. And if it's, you know, higher than the list price, good for that borrower, good for that home buyer. They have a little instant equity. Yay. And you're still getting what you need. Because you came up with the number you came up with and you know the net that you're going to get from that number. So you're still getting what you need and this house is getting sold and it doesn't have to go back on the market and you don't have to have any more showings and you're still headed toward the closing table. And so frustrating to not know the exact value that the appraiser set. Sure, sure. Does it change your life? No, you're still moving on. You're still moving forward. So just let it go. Um, but that's pretty much what's come up lately, appraiser versus inspector and the differences there. Uh, I could get into some inspector stories, oh, I, but suffice it to say, um, when realtors recommend inspectors, please know, other than maybe a few bad apples, we're not getting kickbacks. I can only speak for me and my husband. We do not get a kickback. I'm not recommending the gentlemen that we recommend because these guys pay us or give us a piece of the pie. Um, they don't. We recommend, and I feel most of our colleagues, a majority of our, the majority of our colleagues um, recommend inspectors because they get the job done. 
They don't scare buyers. They actually know what they're doing and they defer when they need to defer. Okay. Um, but you as a buyer, you get to pick your inspector. And so that's, that's good to keep in mind. You can hire anybody you want. You can, I had a client, um, run Google reviews and, and, and do some research. And she ended up saying, Oh, we want to go with this person. And I said, Hey, that's one of the two dudes that we recommend. Absolutely. Let's give him a call. Um, uh, but the biggest thing that I think is another misconception out there is that realtors are just in collusion with home inspectors. And I just, it, it blows my mind. It doesn't make any sense to me why we would be because down the line, oh my gosh, I don't want to get sued. That's not what I'm out here to do. I'm out here to make sure that this house is safe and structurally sound and worth the money you're about to spend on it. And that we got you the best deal that we could. And beyond that, mm, no, I don't need 50 bucks from a home inspector to make me feel better or whatever. Um, so please know inspections, buyer, buyer hires, Buyer pays up front um, and you make a repair request based on the information they give you and then you negotiate with the seller. And appraisal, on the other hand, hired by the lender or financing institution. Buyer pays, but it's at it's wrapped into your closing costs. Um, you could have lender required repairs, but they're still open to negotiation. And the biggest point that I want you guys to know is that the seller does not have to pay. There are instances when the buyer can't but for the majority of the time, just negotiate through it. At the end of the day, you both want the house to close. At the end of the day, you want to sign the paperwork at the closing table. And so just figure out how to get there in the best way for everybody. Um, and then the appraiser is going to set the value of the home. And you're hoping that it at least meets. Um, it is the same number as the purchase price that you guys have agreed on. And, and if that all matches up, everything's copacetic. Everybody's headed to the closing table. Things are looking good. So that is a little bit of real estate here at What's Up Waco. Again, next week, we'll be back with some small town, small business owners. Uh, we will have some, some Waco people coming through and talking to you about what we love about Waco, uh, some cool business concepts that are coming through. And as of today, that's What's Up Waco. you want to talk about do you have questions about Waco the real estate market how to sell your house what to look for when you're buying a home send me an email erica sells texas at gmail.com shoot me a text 254-447-0180 happy to chat about it find me anywhere you listen to your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com this has been a rogue media network Production. Are you a podcaster? Let's talk podcast hosting. Are you tired of your current podcast host? Need real support in a community that gets it? At Rogue Media Network, we offer top-tier podcast hosting services to help you thrive. From hosting and distribution to dedicated support, we've got you covered. Starting as low as $25 a month. Join our community of passionate podcasters today. Contact us at hello at roguemedianetwork.com.